It was the top of the fifth inning in the second game of the Caribou Little League three-game championship series. If we, Hannaford, win, the series is over. Our best available pitcher is up to bat, and we need him to come out to close out the game after we're up. As of now, we're holding on to the lead by a few runs, two outs. He gets up to bat and hits a beautiful hit to right field, where the right fielder miraculously gets it in quickly to second base, right as our guy is sliding in. The umpire calls it out. Our player pops up as the opposing team's running off the field. He's unhappy with the, with the call. So he throws his helmet, kicks it, runs into the dugout, and voices some pretty harsh words. The coaches, including myself, come together we know we need him to pitch in order to uh, close out the game to win, but our priority stretches beyond baseball, and we're more concerned with developing good citizens. We made the difficult decision to bench him, and sure enough, we lost game two. You see, I used to think that phrase, it takes a village, meant my village would do logistical things, like they would make me suffer as I was home recovering after having a baby or they would um, pick up my son at basketball practice while I'm across town dropping off my daughters at dance class because those things always end up happening at the same time. However, that expression means so much more than that. The African proverb, it takes a village, is centered around raising a child. Synonyms of the phrase include collective responsibility, shared undertaking, teamwork makes the dream work, or many hands make light work. It takes a village to connect with and raise our children. Positive relationships with adults can impact who they grow to be. Sports coaches, teachers, dance instructors, even adults in the grocery store can impact our kids. It's a community effort and it takes difficult decisions like some, sometimes benching our best players because of unacceptable behavior. Students need a fresh start because they're coming to school from diverse backgrounds or experiences. They might come with full bellies or empty ones. They might have come from a calm home environment or maybe they tantrumed every single time they were challenged. Regardless of what they're coming from, the color of their skin, their home dynamic, or the choices that they've made previously, children need a fresh start and for adults like teachers and coaches to have a growth mindset toward them. Students need to know school is a safe place where they feel supported and empowered to learn. An environment that fosters positive relationships with adults and their peers. When that's established and maintained, students are more likely to learn the content, but also learn how to work with people who might not be exactly like them. Every spring, grade level teachers begin to receive their class lists, and sometimes the names that pop out first on that class list are the names of the kids who have that reputation of getting in trouble on the bus, and in the hallway, and in the bathroom, and really everywhere they go. When I was a young child, I witnessed a classmate like this. He came from a home that I'm not exactly sure what went on at home, but even as a young child myself, I couldn't help but notice how dirty he came to school. He was that kid getting yelled at everywhere he went. What I witnessed back then helped to mold me into the educator that I am today. That when a child walked through my door, they were going to know I value them, I'm happy to see them, they bring me joy, and I believe in them. My core belief, the belief I keep dearest in my heart, is that each and every child deserves a fresh start. Maybe that fresh start occurs at the beginning of the school year, or maybe at the beginning of the school day, or it might even be every five minute that, minutes that kid needs a refresh. I want to tell you about a child we're going to call Griff. Griff had a reputation of, in kindergarten of getting in trouble everywhere he went, and nearly every staff member knew of him. But when I saw him on my class list, I was truly eager at the opportunity to give him a fresh start and be a part of his village. Sure enough, fall came and he walked through my doors and I was met with his impulsivity, talkative nature, and constant interruptions. I tried everything in my toolbox. Rewards, praise, consequences, visual aids, you name it, I tried it. The plan I finally landed on was to hold a clipboard and a timer. If he could go five minutes without interrupting, he'd earn a check mark. At the end of the day, if he had 20 check marks, 
He could, deliver, he could go around the school and deliver the bus notes, because I knew how much he loved socializing. After a month or so, he was earning 20 check marks by early afternoon. Was this ideal or easy? Absolutely not. I swear sometimes I would be home doing the dishes in the evening and I would still hear that timer. However, that's what he needed. He needed the refresh at the beginning of the school year. He needed the refresh when I greeted him with a smile every single day. He needed the five minute reminder that I still believed in him. His five minute fresh start reminded him that I loved him and he grew. A few years later, I had the opportunity to choose to work with him again, and you better believe I hopped on that so fast because I was so proud to be a part of his village. According to the National Alliance on Mental Illness, there are three elements communities provide that are critical to building strong mental health, belonging, support, and purpose. These three things apply to both students and educators. Teachers need a village. We can't be in this alone. It is our collective responsibility to engage with each other so our sense of belonging, support, and purpose overflows to fill the plates of the students we serve. Without this community, teachers are more likely to get tired, burnt out, or maybe even leave the profession entirely. Respected educator Robert John Meehan wrote, the most valuable resource that all teachers have is each other. Without collaboration, our growth is limited to our own perspectives. I am the most inspired about teaching when I'm connected with passionate educators who push me to reflect on my practices and consistently improve. If we stay within our four classroom walls, we only impact those students there. If we come together and expand our teachers' villages, Think of the impact we can have on our students and educators. It's, in, it's opportunities like this cohort that can ignite excitement in education. When our educators feel supported, encouraged, empowered, and inspired, this will trickle down to our students feeling supported, encouraged, empowered, and inspired. In the end, the way we build community has the power to support both educators and children. Productive struggles like correcting inappropriate behavior on the baseball field or five minute timers in the classroom can be emotionally taxing. However, when educators have their community to fall back on, we build a stronger profession. In case you were wondering, and the suspense was killing you, we won game three. Let's go Hannaford, thank you. Yeah.